<clears throat> well, good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? Listen, I'm pumped up. I'm motivated. I'm encouraged. Welcome, welcome to our moment of empowerment. I am your host, Miguel A. Ramos. Amen. So, uh, listen, I am your motivational speaker. I am your empowerment coach. I am your transformational trainer. So, you know, we have a very special treat for you this morning. I know we're coming on a little bit early, but, you know, just, just, just forming discipline. Just forming a little discipline. So today and all for the rest of this week, I want to give you a little treat. You know, I want to share with you just a couple of principles that um, I live my life by. And those principles, believe it or not, they come directly from the Bible. You know, I am a man of faith and I believe that the Word of God has many, many answers that, believe it or not, we overlook. You know, I've built my businesses, you know, um, according to the word of God, you know, run my ministry, of course, according to the word of God, my family, my friends, everything I do, according to the word of God, there is a ton of information in that book, you know, and if you are one that is familiar with the book or not familiar with the book, listen, it's okay, I'm going to help you out uh, with it. So, you know, many people are there, out there, excuse me, uh, in this day and age are starting uh their own business you know they're they're self-employed you know entrepreneurship you know the i want to say the market for entrepreneurship it is booming right now and most of the time you know um you don't know what to do you don't know where to go you don't know how to discipline yourself how to you know strategize how to build your business from the ground up well you're in luck because today I'm going to give you uh, some biblical principles and throughout the week as well. So I hope that you start with us. You start following us, you know, fresh today that, you know, throughout the week you can see um, and I can share with you the biblical principles from the Bible. I say, listen, it's one of the oldest books in the world, you know, they have so many stories of success, so many stories of failures. They have so many miracles out there. They have so many ways, you know, that you can learn from the experience. I'm not telling you to be a theologian. I'm not telling you to go and, and you know, uh, try to get your degree in Bible studies and all that stuff. No, but if you read some stories in the Bible, you can extract a lot of information that can save you a lot of time and money concerning your business, you know? So so there were a lot of business people in the Bible that did exceptionally well, and a lot of them, you know, they extracted those principles from these things in the Bible. So today we wanna start with sharing with you a, a small brief story about Jesus and a couple of friends that he had. And, you know, and, and from there you can see that how a business can really uh, can really boom if you just let yourself be coached, you know, um, necessarily somebody can know what it is that you're trying to get to. So if, if you really allow that person to lead you and, and, you know, guide you to certain things in life, I'm telling you, you can save so much more time. I've done it. I haven't always known all the answers. I haven't always known all the insight now, but I, I allow people to coach me. I allow people to train me, to lead me, to guide me. And I tell you, it, it's, it saved me so much time. So Let's get to this. So if you have your Bible handy, if you're, if you're following with me, you know, grab your Bibles. Um, if you don't have a Bible, listen, there's no problem. If, if you would like to get a Bible, if you have a smartphone, listen, download the app right into your phone. Trust me, you know, it, it's, it's just going to help you so much more better with your business, with your character, with all these things. But if you're driving or, you know, you're just listening to me or whatever, listen, just, just follow along. But there's a story in the Bible, in the, in the book of Luke. Chapter 5, and I love this story because it teaches us uh, about management. It teaches us about partnership. And it also teaches us about being coachable. You know, that is one of the things that, believe it or not, um, it becomes a detriment to a lot of business owners. You know, it's good. You go out, you start well, you make money, and then you feel like you don't need anybody. But you hit that glass ceiling where you want to enlarge in your territory, you want to grow your business, but if you don't become coachable, if you don't let somebody else look from an outside perspective and tell you, you got to take care of A, B, and C, then you're not really going to grow. So let people help you. So let's get to the story and watch this. The story is about a couple of fishermen and Jesus, who, remember, was a carpenter himself, you know, so he had a business as well, you know, uh, his stepdad, you know, Joseph was a carpenter, he took over the the, father, the family business, but he had a change uh, of mind, so he started doing ministry, but watch this, let's read the story, and then I'm going to extract it, because I'm going to show you how to find these gold nuggets in the Word of God that you can apply to your life, you ready? Let's go, I'm reading from Luke chapter 5, and I'm going to read just a couple of verses from 1 through 8, very quickly, and it says, so it was, as the 
the multitude pressed about him, him being Jesus, to hear uh, the word of God, that he stood by the lake of, of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, and which was Simon's, and this is Peter, and asked them to put out a little bit from the land. In other words, push it a little bit from shore. And he sat down and taught the multitude from the boat. This is Jesus now preaching from the boat, right? And when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. In other words, you know, throw your net back into the water. You know, Peter had already done fishing. He was gone for the, he was done for the day. And Jesus telling him to throw his net back. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at, at, at your word, I will let you down. In other words, you know, I, listen, we've, done, we've been fishing the whole day. We didn't catch anything. But according to your coaching abilities, I, I'm going to throw the net right now. I'm going to listen to your coaching abilities, right? So he said, so they uh, signaled to their partners, excuse me, in verse 6, and when they had done this, when he threw the net, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. And when they signal for their partners, the other fishermen friends in, in, in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and they filled both boats and they began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knee and he said, Depart from me, O Lord, for I am a sinful man. Now, again, I want you to extract the religion from here. And let's just talk business because I want to help you out in your business. Oh, yeah, God will help you out in your business. You know, so I want to extract religion from here and I want to let you know what's going on over here. Here it is. Jesus, believe it or not, has a change of mind and starts another business. Yeah, which is ministry. Believe it or not, ministry is a type of business because you have to pay the bills. You have to, you know, uh, make sure all the books is right. You have to make sure all the numbers are right. And if you don't run it like a business, chances are you're going to go down before you go up. So that is a business. So here it is. Jesus has a business. Peter has a business. He's a fisherman. He's a, uh, a, a business of, uh, of fishing, right? Fishing industry over here. And what happens is that they partnered up, you know? And that's the first principle I want to speak to you about, partnering, you know? Not necessarily that you have to share your profits with somebody else, but have you ever thought about partnering with other people? Maybe you are an entrepreneur and you're trying to enlarge in your territory. Maybe it's time for you to partner. You know, like I told you before, I've been in so many network marketing uh, uh, businesses and that's what, what network marketing is all about. It's about partnering. It's about uh, coming together with other individuals and through partnering, watch this, you enlarge in your territory. You enlarge in your market, you widen your margin, you get to meet different people. That's why it's called network marketing, right? You partner with people all the time via social media, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever it is. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to partner. So that's the first principle that the Lord uses to enlarge in his business, not just the ministry part, but also to enlarge in Peter's business. He partnered up. Don't be afraid of partner. Don't think that somebody's going to take your ideas, your inspiration, aspiration. No, sometimes partnering is good, right? You need to learn to partner with different people, whether it's in ministry or in business. If you want to enlarge in your territory, if you want your business to grow, there's going to come a time where, listen, you can only do but so much. Look at your body. You got two hands, right? When both of your hands are filled up, that's all you can do. You need more hands, right? So in order to get more hands, you need to partner with other people. Start recruiting. You know, businesses do it all the time. When they get to get bigger, what do they start doing? They start hiring other people. That's called partnering, right? When you want to enlarge, you partner. Even in life, let's say natural, right? When when a man meets a woman, right, and he wants to enlarge it or she wants to enlarge in their family, they partner. So partnering, believe it or not, is a rule of nature, right? So don't be afraid of partner. Do your, your, your due diligence and understand and find out and research about partnering because partnering is something that is very good. It will enlarge in your territory. It will enlarge in your margin. It will widen all your perspective and allow you to gain in profitability. So learn to partner. Partnership is really good. So again, you see in the story here that as Jesus now um, partners with Peter, 
it, it, it becomes a, a very intricate relationship because, you know, the first thing that Jesus does is that he needs a pulpit. He needs a stage so he can start preaching. So he, he asks Peter, can he use his boat? That is principle number two. Don't be stingy. Don't be stingy with what you have, you know? If you have to invest, then invest. You know, if you need, you know, you're trying to start a business, you need that new camera, you need the new equipment. Listen, save up and invest invest don't think that it's a waste of money it may be a lot of money now but as you make more money you're gonna see the investment there right so don't be stingy with what you have if you have a piece of equipment if you have something listen that's another reason why you should partner maybe somebody else has a better piece of equipment or a better tool or whatever it is and you need their help ask for help ask them listen can I can I use your boat you know I, I'm doing a speaking engagement you know by the seashore this week can, can I use your boat? Oh, sure, no part, no problem. That's why you need to partner with one another, right? To uh, to help one another. So again, so principle number two is don't be stingy, right? Don't be stingy with what you have. Don't think that people are gonna come in and and, and take your 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 uh, your your customers or take this or take that. No, listen. Trust yourself and trust the loyalty of your customers, right? And also be confident in what it is that you're putting out, you know, in business. But you know, don't be stingy with what you have. You know, sometimes you can break more relationships like that than you actually create relationship, right? So don't be stingy, right? So so let's keep going. So as the story unravels and the story keeps going, this is my favorite part of the story because a lot of people believe that, oh, listen, I can do it by myself. If you are that person that you are very confident that you can do it by yourself, cool, no problem. But every now and then, and I'm telling you more times than none, every now and then you need that person to inspire you to coach you, to motivate you, to push you to the next level. And this is exactly what happened. After they had the exchange and after Peter allowed Jesus to use his bow, then Jesus comes to return the favor and help him and coach him in his business. Because look what he did. He told them, listen, they were done for the day. They were washing their nets. They were going home. And, P and Jesus told Peter, listen, one more time, trust me, one more time, take your net and throw it down on the other side. Peter was already famished. He was tired. He said, you know what? We've been doing this all day. You may know about preaching, but I know about fishing. You can't tell me otherwise. Listen, but according to your word, that's what he said. According to your word, according to your coaching abilities, I'm going to listen. So there's dual principles right there. Number one, Jesus now becomes the motivational coach right there, right? He becomes the empowerment guru to Peter. And this is the, the, the revelation right here that you may know how to run your business, but other people may know when. In other words, Peter knew how to fish. He knew how to do it. But Jesus knew when it should be done. And sometimes that's what coaches help you do. They, they tell you the when. They tell you the where. They tell you the what. You may know the hows, but all the other Ws, your coach may know. So again, you know, when you allow yourself to be coached, you know, they can give you better strategy, better vision. Listen, I've been doing this, what I'm doing right now, for years. And it wasn't until a very good friend of mine, who actually my strategic coach, who came to me and said, you know what? You know you can brand yourself doing that? And I was like, what do you mean brand myself? I'm like, what, what are you talking about? All I want to do is help people. And he said, right. So help me enlarge in your market. Help me enlarge in your margin. And I said, okay, you know what? Let's give it a whack. And I humbled myself and I listened to this person and this person has helped me reach all of you right now, right? So that's exactly what we've been doing. That's exactly what Jesus did with Peter. Peter knew how, but Jesus knew when. And the other aspect of that was that even though Peter had experienced fishing and Jesus did not, see, because it, the person coaching you doesn't necessarily have to have experience in what it is that you're doing. They can just know market. They can know people. They can know where, uh, where what, and what, and when. You know, they can know all the other resources, but you know the business. And that's why you have to partner up with somebody else because you may be missing a piece of the puzzle, right? So that's what he said. He, uh, uh, Peter said, you know what? I, I know... I know that I know I'm a fisherman. I know that I, I know the business. But you know what? At, at your expense, I'm going to let you coach me. So he became coachable. So you have to let yourself be coached. Don't be a know-it-all. Listen, don't, 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 don't be a glass all, all the way full and then somebody's trying to teach you and you're trying to spill over. Don't do that. Humble yourself. Even if it's information that you say, well, you know, this is irrelevant to me. Listen, just be polite. Listen, and I guarantee you, the little by little, it will start making sense. So be coachable, right? So let yourself be coached. 
listen to coaches, listen to other partners out there, and also, you know, uh, let yourself uh, become coachable as well, right? So so let's keep going because this is good. I, I hope this is really helping you guys, you know. Like, again, this is all business principle in the Bible. They're right in the Bible, and we can extract all these business principles right out. This is so exciting. So he goes out. He launches his net, right? As he launches his net, now he starts to gather a multitude of fish. And look what Simon Peter uh, says. He says, and when they had done this, they caught a great multitude of fish, and the net was breaking. The net was breaking. Now, what, the, what, what is the net? The net is the tool that they use to gather the fish, right? So you may have a tool. You may have... Uh, uh, something that can help you gather profitability. Watch this. Tools can be your team. Tools can be your partners. Tools can be, you know, your equipment. Tools can be, you know, even your own motivation, your own emotions, your own, you know, inspiration, dreams. You know, maybe today you're not feeling to it. You know, you're feeling down. You're feeling, you know, depressed. You know, tomorrow you are. You know, those could be tools. You know, to me, tools is my words. You know, tools is, is no, you know, the word of God, the knowledge that I have, you know, my excitement, my enjoyment. You know, but let's say one day I'm not really feeling it. And what happens is that every time, watch this. When you tend to have success in life, it will put you under pressure. Oh, yes, that's right. When success comes, it will build a level of pressure. You're going to get excited. You're going to get happy. You're going to get thrilled. But it will build a level of pressure that is going to cause your net to break. And if you don't have the right, I want to say, support system, then what happens is that net is going to break and you're going to lose all profitability. So that's why, again, integrity character, you know, getting your emotions in line, you know, having a well-balanced team that when your hands get tired, they can lift you up, they can pump you up, they can motivate you, you know, hey, if you don't have anybody like that, come, hey, watch these videos, I motivate you, I'll be your strategic partner uh, right now, right, that you can be pumped up and tackle the day, because every now and then, listen, we get weary, and that's what the net breaking represents, we get weary, we get tired, we get, you know, discontented with whatever it is, depressed, but we need to mend those nets, you know, anytime, and the reason the net was breaking is because every time they would catch the fish, the fish would start biting the net to get to, to try to, you know, get away from it, so the net were breaking, so anytime your net breaks, believe it or not, it's not, it's not a sign of, uh, of bad situation, but it's a sign of good situation, because that means that you're increasing in profitability, there's a verse in the Bible that says, to whom much is given, from them much is required, and that means that, you know, just like Biggie said, more money, more problems, right, so the greater you grow, you know, the more stress is put on you, and this is why you have to enlarge in your territory, now watch what happens, so when the net started breaking, Breaking, the next verse said that they signal, hey, scooty woo, ha, you know, <laughs> they, they signal for their partners. They say, hey, man, come give me a hand. Do not be afraid to uh, hire new people. Do not be afraid, you know, to partner with new people. Do not be afraid to enlarge in your business because anytime when you get more, when you enlarge in your, your business, you're going to tend to say, oh, man, you know, I made it. I want it more for myself. No, listen, share the wealth. Share the wealth, share the sunshine, get more people. Hey, listen, you want to partner up with me? I got this great business, it's really booming, and I think that you'll be a great candidate for this. You know, if you have, you know, whatever it is, a, a movement, and you're creating a movement, start recruiting people, you know, right? Because it's, you're going to get blessed, you're going to grow, you're going to increase, but you need more partners to help you pull up that net. So, again, don't be afraid to partner. Don't be afraid to call for help. That's the other part right here. You know, sometimes we say, you know what? Uh, you know, I'm just going to do it by myself. I'm just going to tackle it by myself. You know, I, I, you know, sometimes we feel that the person we're bringing in is not skilled enough, is not intellectual enough, it's not smart enough, it's not, you know, whatever enough. And we say, I'm going to do it by myself. No, listen, get other people. Teach them the trade because I always said, you know, that you should always have a successor. In everything that you do, you should always have a successor. If you're sick tomorrow or, you know, something happens, who's going to take over? Who knows how to work that machine? Who knows how to do what you do? Who, are the, who is the person that you're training to take over in, some, in case something happens or to cover for you uh, on those days, right? So, so train somebody, right? So it goes on, and look at this. We're almost done. And it says, and then they filled the boats. It says that when the boats began to fill, so they began to sink. And Peter saw it, and he fell down, and he, you know, he repented for Jesus. But the, the one part I want you to, to, to start thinking about, it says, they began to sink. Listen, this is so relevant. 
if you're in a boat and you put more weight on a boat, chances are is that you're going to start sinking. So the last thing that Jesus shows Peter, look, he, he, he gets him from point A to point B, boom, 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 and he's taking him all through these points of entrepreneurship. The first thing he teaches them is to share, right? Share your knowledge, share your wisdom, share whatever it is. Listen, you're a business out there. I guarantee you the number one reason to grow, start a charity, do community service, give back to the community, and people will respect you for that, and they will support your business. If you're a small mom and pop, listen, you can grow real big by doing community services, you know? That's, you know, one of my biggest secrets, believe it or not, of for me to grow the church. That's how I've been growing our church, to doing a lot of community service. Um, he teaches him how to share. As he teaches him how to share, the last thing he teaches him is that when you take too much and the vessel that you're in is smaller than what you're taking in, you're going to tend to sink. In other words, listen, I'm going to tell you something real quick. You see me right here. I'm in my office, in my home. I'm doing these videos. I got my cameras. I got my lights over here. You know, got my posters, got all these things going on. I know that my growth is inevitable. Not only do I have faith, but I'm confident in what I'm doing. All this right here, one day is going to become too small for me to do what I'm doing. And I'm going to get bigger. Same thing with you. You're doing that business. One day it's going to become too small. And the sinking aspect of it is not that you're losing profitability. It's not that you're losing margin. It's not that you're losing people. But it just means that you need to grow. So when the boat starts to sink, it is a sure sign that you need to get a bigger vessel. Maybe you need to get an office. So, so don't jump the gun. Don't try to get all happy-go-lucky and say, oh, man, I got 100 followers. Let me go and rent the business down the street. No, no, no. Wait for the boat to start sinking. When the boat starts sinking, that's a short sign to say, you know what? I need a bigger boat. I need a bigger margin. I need to do something greater. And that's when you need to identify. So the last thing that Jesus gives Peter is an identification to know when to grow right? So again, my friends, listen, I hope that this really has blessed you. You know, again, this is our biblical entrepreneurship week, right? You know, so throughout this whole week, I'm going to be sharing with you biblical business principles to help you grow your business. You know, I have so many great, great principles out there, but listen, I want you all to do me a favor. You know, if all of this is helping you out, check out my business page on Facebook is Miguel Ramos business page. If not, listen, I would do, I, I will really, really appreciate it. If you will go to Miguel A. Ramos dot com miguel a ramos dot com don't forget that a right there right where is it at right miguel a ramos dot com and check out my website there's a lot of good content there maybe you are one that you know you want to uh extract that leader from within you you need a motivational speaker you need you know uh um whatever it is an empowerment coaches and check me out i am willing to work with you make an appointment right hand corner click right there book an appointment and um you know, call me up and we can, you know, definitely work together. But again, listen, thank you for your time. Thank you for this moment of empowerment. I hope and I pray that this has helped you. Listen, and I'm, I'm putting this across the board, whether you are a believer or not, there's a lot of great principles in this old book over here, this great old book. Let us extract it together. I can help you grow your business. I can help you grow your team. I can help you grow your church. I can help you, you know, extract the information, apply it to your life. And listen, reach out to your boy if you're willing to work with me. And, you know, thank you for your support and your love. And we'll see each other again tomorrow, right? Peace. God bless.